Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the next session in our Tips and Tricks series, Change Reconciliation with Mike Betty. I'm Liz Fox, Marketing Events Manager at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of today's event. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. You'll notice there are several widgets at the bottom of the screen. Here you can download slides from today's presentation, view speaker bios, and submit questions for our Q&A section. Our speaker will remain on the line to answer questions at the conclusion of the webinar. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please click on the help widget. We'll also be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand webcast and the slides at the conclusion of today's event. So now let's get on with the presentation. Today's speaker, Mike Betty, is a sales system engineer supporting Tripwire's utility and industrial customers. He's been working in the security field for over 20 years and believes that security products by themselves do not protect a company. You need good people and processes in place and a way to validate those processes along with a defense in-depth approach. So now, without further delay, I will turn it over to Mike. Thank you, Liz. And yeah, today we're doing tips and tricks on Tripwire Enterprise, of course, and I'm going into a lot of change reconciliation tactics i am been with Tripwire, like she said, for more than 12 years, but I've been doing security a lot longer than that. I was a software engineer working in the area of DOD um, for a number of years before moving into security and writing security products before I moved into the SE role about 15 years ago. So um, today we're doing tips and tricks. Hopefully everybody can see my slides. Um, our agenda for today is we're going to start with files versus command output capture rules. That way, um, those are the two main ways of getting information in Tripwire Enterprise. And then we can review those changes for easier ways to do promotion um, and define what that is. And then we can build some actions, an area that a lot of people don't seem to take advantage of in Tripwire Enterprise but that's what we're going to uh, learn how to do today in case you haven't been using them. A few definitions to get started. I know there's going to be people on here that are very experienced with Tripwire Enterprise that know a lot of this, uh, but there will also be a number of people on here who may be a bit new to Tripwire Enterprise. So we'll start with the element and the basic elements of Tripwire Enterprise. It's a unit of change. Essentially, it could be a file, a registry entry, RSOP, but it could be something from Active Directory or a database. And with some of the new methods Tripwire has in TE Commander, one of our add-on command line tools, you can even pull things from any kind of object and store it as an element in Tripwire Enterprise. And the first element generally is a baseline element. That's what it looks like now. So what you want to find out is what it looks like tomorrow or the next day or, you know, essentially today. Um, when we check for changes again and something is different from the baseline for that element, that creates a version. And you can have multiple versions of the same element. And once you've reviewed that version, you can make it the baseline element and the changes going forward will be compared to that version. So we're always comparing a version to the baseline and that's how we see differences. Essentially, Tripwire is a very big baselining engine that makes the process of baselining a lot easier. And baselining, as you know from any security classes you've had is really important to knowing what's going on in your environment. And then, of course, promotion is taking that version and making it the new baseline, but it's slightly more than that in Tripwire. It's also marking that change as authorized. And there are ways to promote something to the baseline without marking it authorized. So you should always, when you're doing your promotions, make sure there's a uh, a, an authorization ID added. Um, and then there's promotion templates you can use. I'm not going to really cover those today, but they do make when you're doing manual promotions a lot easier. Another piece of Tripwire that's talked about a lot is the event generator. It's a piece of the Tripwire agent that watches writes to the file system. And it's 
implemented in different ways for different operating systems, of course. But the main piece of it is when we're when you're writing to the file system and it's an object that we're monitoring, a registry or a file, um, it grabs who made the change, the application that made the change, and the timestamp. So essentially when something is writing to the file system, the file system knows what process is doing that right, and we can see who is running that process. So it generally tracks back to the process to grab who made the change, and then creates an audit event, and that's what we call audit events in Tripwire. So you'll see event generator and audit events used kind of interchangeably in Tripwire. That can be confusing for some people, but it's really the same thing in the product. When we're talking about the event generator, it generates audit events. Those audit events can be sent in real time or you can hold them up until you run a check. So that's the difference between real time and just grabbing audit events. Um, you can make those audit events real time, but they don't have to be. So, um, the next piece of this is there are different rule types. And in Tripwire Enterprise, there's, you know, the first one that shows up when you're creating a rule is the command output capture rule. And command output capture rules are a way to run a command, and I'm going to give examples of this coming up, um, and capture the output of that command. We do still show the i5OS rules, but we don't have an i5 OS agent anymore. So those are really uh, obsolete and there's nothing in current versions of Tripwire you can use them with. The log transfer rule is still there and it works with Tripwire Log Center. So if you're a Tripwire Log Center customer, you can set up a log transfer rule to find a log on a system and on a periodic basis, send that log to Tripwire Log Center for it to ingest the logs. The Unix file system rule is for Unix systems, Linux, HPUX, Solaris, um, any of those operating systems that you're monitoring with a Tripwire agent can use a Unix file system rule. And then of course there's Windows file system rule and registry rules and RSOP rules. Each of those are for baselining information about various parts of Windows. The file system rules and the registry rules can be run in real time or create events, audit events. So the event generator works with the Unix file system rule, the Windows file system rule, and the Windows registry rule. Only those three. So nothing that you use from a command output capture rule can be done in real time. And I mean, the reason for that is we're watching writes to the file system. If we're running a command, Nothing is writing to the file system or making a change that way. We're just capturing the output of a command. So there's no way to do that in real time. You do command output capture rules from tasks. So file system rules are added to the event generator for monitoring. If you're using the Axon agent, there is a task that will push agent uh, rule updates down to the Axon agents. And it's set by default to run every 24 hours, but I usually go in and change the task for Axon agents to like every 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it doesn't hurt much performance wise to do that. Yet, if you're making changes to your rules, you wanna make sure they get pushed down to your Axon agents in a timely manner. There are registry rules that are added to the event generator. Um, as well. So we can monitor those things in real time and we can generate who made the changes for file system and registry rules. Command output capture rules are not added to the event generator, as I've said. So I want to stress that point. And when we create audit events for the file and registry changes, they kind of look like, you know, what file was changed, what user made the change, and what application made the change and the time that the change actually happened. So 
log files and the event generator. Um, one of the, the event generator watches writes to the file system. And as I said before, those writes can be sent immediately to the Tripwire console, or they can be batched up and sent when you run a task to do the check. And then it puts the audit events on the elements that have changed. So when you want to monitor log files, since log files are changing all the time, and if you put a log file into a file system rule, it's going to generate a lot of traffic because every time you write to that log file, it's going to generate an audit event, which will um, be stored in the Tripwire agent on that system or sent back to the, to the console. Now, the event generator does do something called coalescing, where it takes, there's a bunch of writes to the file system in a short period of time. It combines all of those together from the same process. That way, it's not every couple of nanoseconds sending something to your Tripwire console or to the agent. Um, but that coalesce is, you know, in the realm of seconds. So um, if you're writing to that log file a lot, the event generator can start adding load to your system. So you generally don't want to put logs into file system rules because then they get added to the event generator. So what I like to do is monitor the logs with a coker rule. And one of the things that, that helps with log files is you should be sending those to a log repository as it shows there. So, you know, there's, there's Tripwire Log Center if you don't have something that centralizes logs already. Um, but you could be using Splunk, QRadar, MOOC. So, I mean, there's lots of products um, that do log centralization. And logs should be sent off immediately after they're generated so that nobody can tamper with the logs and you've got a source of truth for your log information. It's really important to be doing that. But you still want to monitor the log files that are local that you keep there, at least for the permissions, because only the process that should be writing to that log should have permission to write to that log. Usually it's administrative privileges of some sort, but you want to keep somebody from being able to tamper with your logs on the system, even though those logs are being sent somewhere else. And in fact, if somebody does go in and start changing the permissions on those logs or m modifying the logs, that's actually a telltale of, you know, potentially some um, bad actor on your system. Um, but you want to make sure that the permissions on those logs are set that, so that only that one process can be making changes to it. And how can we do that without adding all that extra load in a file system rule? Well, I set up a Coker rule to monitor my log files. That can be a little bit tricky on something like Windows. So I have an example of a Coker rule that I wrote that will walk the path down through program files on Microsoft Windows and find anything that's a .log file. And then once it finds that, it pulls the permissions for that log file and generates a bit of content in Tripwire Enterprise. And it creates a version of what those settings are currently set to. You could set this up, you know, to monitor specific log files and, you know, modify this script to do one log file at a time and have one Coker rule to monitor one log. And that would make it easy to um, and reduce the amount of changes you have because log files really, the permission shouldn't be changing. And that way you could set up a tripwire SCM check, a configuration hardening check, to make sure that these settings are configured in a very particular way. So you want to make sure that, you know, NT authority system can have full control. Maybe the built-in administrators have full control, but that nobody else does. No users have full control over that particular log file. And if that shows up, that would be a policy fail and you would get a report about that in Tripwire Enterprise. 
So you want to make sure that your logs are hardened. So you can do the same thing on a Linux box. Linux is a lot easier uh, for getting the permissions on files. I usually use a find command that runs an exec of ls-l and that will output the current permissions on a log file on a Linux box. Um, if you need the full ACLs, there are commands to also grab the ACLs on that. You run a tripwire command output capture rule and that runs that find and you'll get output similar to what you're seeing um, in this example. And then once it's baselined, each time you run that, if it's different, it will show up the change. Uh, like this. So here I can see that a um, application packages was given full control to make changes or to add things to that log file. And that's against my policy. So I would have to go back in and make a modification back for this particular log file. In this case, my Firefox Mozilla install log and change the permissions back so that it um, that only Mozilla can make changes to that log file when it's doing its updates and installs. Hope that makes sense to everybody. But this gives you a way to monitor your log file permissions without generating load on your system when you're using the event generator. So once we've got changes in there, we've got elements, um, the next step would be authorizing change. And I want to go into a little bit about the methods I use for authorizing change in an environment. There are different reasons why you want to you know, make sure that the changes that happened were authorized changes. So we've got compliance reporting, of course, and almost every industry that I deal with has some sort of compliance reporting. And how do you prove that you understand what's happening in your environment? You've got to prove that you knew that the changes were there, were expected and authorized. And in other cases, and I have customers that will do this, they just use Tripwire to track all the changes to a system. And then when the auditor asks, hey, what happened on this system during this time frame?" then they'll go generate a Tripwire report. But nobody's watching what's happening in the meantime. If you know that changes are happening on a system that are unauthorized, right when it happens would be a, you know, within a day or so, would be a good time to track that down because if it's malware, you would know about it a lot faster. We've had cases where we've had customers that caught their breaches because they were doing this with Tripwire. They had somebody that was reviewing the changes. There was a lot of automation set up to review the changes, which we're gonna go into. And they saw some unauthorized changes that slipped through the cracks after they'd done you know, running Tripwire DSR or integration to a ticketing system or some of the methods I'm about to show you, which uses the event generator information to make sure that an authorized process was making changes to the files. So in one case, the PCI environment that they were monitoring, they saw some unauthorized changes with Tripwire. And when they tracked it down, they found out that somebody had actually gotten through the firewall into their PCI environment. And when they looked at their corporate environment, the breach was everywhere, but they didn't have Tripwire in their corporate environment, only in the PCI enclave, and all their other security products had not detected it. Because Tripwire is not looking for malware, it's not looking for signatures, it's just, was this change expected or not? And if you know whether a change was expected or not, and can have that built into your processes, it's you know another level of your defense in depth for security. So the other area is, you know, for management, you know, manual review of change is pretty impossible. That's why Tripwire gives you tools to do some automation. Um, and the first step I usually like to, to take with some customers is on this journey is what is making changes in your environment? What processes are making the changes? 
So I'll set up an audit event review. So Tripwire has a system log report in the reports area. And what I'll do is go in and set up a system report for audit events and then look for any audit events that have an application um, associated with them. And then it pulls in all of the changes in that time period and what application made the change. And I'll export this report into an XML file and pull off just the column for the applications and then track down, are these applications what I want making changes to my environment? Do I have a process that is supposed to be making changes? Say, you know, um, Ansible or Puppet, Chef, Salt, um, any of these other uh, provisioning tools, Blade Logic even, or SCCM. Is that what's supposed to be making the changes or should these other processes be doing that? Am I testing my changes on a UAT test box ahead of time before those changes are made and how are they introduced? If these processes are allowed to make changes to your system and we're picking those up with the event generator, then I can automate the promotion of those changes. So Tripwire has actions. And these actions allow you to take a look at the changes as they come in, or if you add your actions to a task after your checks have finished running, you want Tripwire to automatically review your changes, or at least as much as possible. So actions are a little bit more intricate, but they are powerful, um, as I say here and you want to create these conditional actions are essentially your if statement. If somebody I know made the change, you know, who made the change, what application made the change, if SCCM made the change or um, Ansible made the change, I can then promote the change based on that. So the conditional actions are your, you know, if, if there was a certain tag on the asset um, and the element name was a certain element, then go ahead and promote it. This is a normal change that I'm expecting, for instance. Um, you can combine these actions. They are nestable. So it could be like multiple if statements. If the files are in my Mozilla directory, and those files were updated by uh, a Mozilla update application running as administrator, then, and then we can get to the then portion of the actions, we have conditional responses. So these are not if statements, these are the actions that allow you to do something. So if it's this element name, and the um, action has detected that it was a particular process that made the change, then email a report to somebody or run a script to um, change something back or to um, send it to some other type of system that we might not have a direct integration for that doesn't work with say syslogs. Um, you can approve the change so there are ways to tell it, hey, approve this change, um, you know, promote this specific version because it was made by a particular application running as a particular user. You could run a full report, um, tell it to run another check. So I've set up a task that after everything runs, if I see certain changes, I can run another task to go check a different um, set of rules. So one task can be kicked off by another. Um, you can mark changes as critical. So I can set the severities of particular changes up. If I see a certain change that's made by a, that's not made by the process I'm expecting, then raise the level of that to a higher severity. And then I can have tripwire reports that only show changes above a certain severity so that it can point those out to you. You can send SNMP traps, you can send syslogs, 
or retag an asset. Um, Tripwire has an integration with IP360 that uses that idea so that if we see a vulnerability that's, you know, a, a very risky high level vulnerability, say, or, you know, a remote execution attack, we can actually tag the asset as having um, known vulnerabilities so you can drop that asset into a particular report. So conditional responses give you a lot of options. What I usually tell people is, you know, work with your SE and or Tripwire Professional Services Engagement Manager. If you know what kind of things you want to look for and what workflow you want, but aren't sure how to get there, your SEs can definitely help you with that, um, give you advice and, and help you come up with ways to um, use the Tripwire actions to make uh, all your review a lot easier. I know I work with a lot of my customers on that and have set up a number of um, actions to do some quick things. So the one I like to, to use a lot, and I've mentioned a few times on here, is the conditional action. And it's looking at the audit trail. And this is essentially the event generator. When you set up your event generator and turn it on in Tripwire, um, and you know that's another area that we could go into is how to set up the event generator. Um, but once you have it and you're generating those events, you've got who made the change, what application made the change, you've got when that change was made, and we have an action that works with that audit trail. And it can pull off the message information and show, you know, hey, um, if Windows Defender um, application made an update to my Windows Defender settings, and it was running as NT Authority System, which is the only thing it should be running as, then mark those changes as approved. So if something else goes in and edits your Windows Defender um, settings, then you would get essentially an alert or these changes wouldn't be promoted and they would be there for um, reporting or manual um, review. And the idea is to automatically promote and, and find as many of the changes that are expected as possible so that there's very little to review when you do have to get to a manual review. So I hope that makes sense for everybody. And I will be taking questions at the end. So um, and I will be answering the questions at the end. I notice I have a couple already. Um, so audit trail conditional action. The next step would be to um, I set the you know defender changes and I've modified it so that um, I've got a message that looks for Windows Defender. The user contains NT Authority System. And then if it's true, I have a promote. So one of those, those um, regular actions in Tripwire to do something. And in this case, it's promote a specific version. So if it's that application running as that user for Defender, then I can promote the Defender change. And what that looks like, it's a Tripwire you know, promotion um, template. So Windows Defender was updated, and this was expected and allowed. And the approval identifier, and this is really important when you're doing Tripwire promotions. I have seen people that put the comment in, but then don't update the approval identifier. In the Tripwire reports, the thing that it looks for to mark a change as authorized versus unauthorized is the approval identifier. And you can do that from a custom property, which would be a whole nother tips and tricks um, presentation to go over how to use custom properties and all the advantages those have for tagging things as um, changes come in. But in this case, I'm going to promote this as a Defender update, and if you click on the Tripwire Help, 
pip here at the top right, you can see a lot of formats for putting a date time string in there. So when this gets promoted, it'll fill in the date time stamp in the approval identifier so you know you know specifically when that was updated right in the 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 uh, identifier string which can be shown in reports so what i've done here is i've seen changes to microsoft defender updates i've seen which application made the changes and i've auto promoted those so that allows me to um, you know, get some of those changes out of the way and I don't have to review them. Of course, once I create that action, in order for it to take effect, it has to go somewhere. So just creating the action doesn't make the action do anything. It has to go on to an actions tab, either in the rules or the tasks. So if you're in a tripwire rule, you'll notice there's an action tab. And if I'm doing things in real time, it pretty much has to go on the rule because you're not, it's not running a task in order for the change to come in. So if I'm tracking changes to the Windows Defender directories in real time, then I'm going to put my action onto the actions tab of the rule. If I wanna run my action at the end of an entire run of a task, so say I wanna run a report action after an entire tasks, task runs that will show me just the changes from that task, then I would add the action onto the action tab of the task. So the actions on a task don't run until the entire task is finished. The actions on a rule will run after that rule is fired and, and the um, changes that are detected by that rule are coalesced, and then the action will run. And of course, in this case, what I end up with is auto promotion. So the changes to Windows Defender um, show up in my report, and I'm doing a changed elements with approval ID. So you can see that there's the Defender the update from the other day, the user was NT Authority System. Uh, I can see it was modified. And in my authorized versus unauthorized report, this would already be marked as authorized. If I were running a report of just unapproved changes, these wouldn't show up in it because they're already approved. And this happens automatically. Tripwire looks at what happened we know what your process is for updates to Defender, and those are automatically marked as approved. We do give you a lot of other methods of automatic reconciliation. The actions are, are one really good one, and there are a number of other actions you can use um, to do promotions. So, but, the common ones are integration to a ticketing system. So if we see that those tickets um, are in an approved state, we can pull those down from your ticketing system and compare them to the changes we detected on particular servers. And if there's a ticket for that change, we can promote that change. Um, you could integrate to some malware analysis system and we would send the hashes up to that, like a FireEye or something. And if it comes back and says, hey, this is not known malware, you could potentially auto promote it. Um, promoting by match, that's actually using tripwire actions and a manifest for the changes. So I had a customer that were, they, they had their own application that they would roll out and they would um, zip that application up in order to roll it out to all their systems with their provisioning tool. But before they did that, they would um, take the, 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 the zip content of the names of the files and would drop that in a directory on the Tripwire console. And they set up an automated way to do that. It would unzip it and generate the manifest, drop it in the directory, and then after Tripwire ran the checks and it saw changes um, to that application, it actually did 
ran an action that did a promote by match, and it saw the file was there, pulled the information from the file of what's in that um, manifest, and promoted the changes. So that was a process that they had. They knew that that process was repeatable um, and would do their updates that way. Another case of promote by match is to compare it to the files on a particular system, in one case, a UAT test system. So before they would um, roll out a change to their entire environment, I, I've had actually a number of customers that do this, where they would have a virtual machine, say, that has Windows on it, they would patch that one first. Then when they roll the change out into production, all their production boxes would do a comparison of the file and hash to the same version of Windows that was on a virtual machine. And because those changes were already there and matched at the file and hash level, it would auto promote those changes. So it, it gives you actually a very easy way to ensure that your production boxes match your test system. And that's a very powerful way to do it. And if you've got solid processes for change, um, it's actually very easy to set up. So that's a promote by reference type of tripwire action. And changes by severity. So I talked a short bit ago about um, using an action to change the severity of something based on what we've seen and giving it a higher priority. You can do the same thing for other files where you give it a lower priority. And so I've set up actions to set common changes to a low priority, say below 100, and then just have a process in Tripwire that runs that will go and promote any of the changes that have a severity less than 100. And that's, that's a type of business as usual processing but I've got a whole separate presentation just on um, how to set up BAU processing, which are files that you know that change practically every day. You still wanna track them, but you don't want, you know that they're supposed to change and you don't want them in your reports. You set up BAU processing and all of those files can be taken care of. So finally, um, at the end, there's probably going to be still some manual review for emergency changes, something that um, there wasn't a manifest for it, there wasn't a ticket for it, it wasn't, the change wasn't made by a known process, you know, you've got a few changes left. And if you're a customer that hasn't set up any type of auto promotion, um, there are ways to do manual review to make life easier on you. And one of the things I often do is I, I will have a changed element report and it shows all the changes, but I will group them by, you know, the same version of Windows. So I'll have one report for Windows 2012 R2, another report for all my Windows 2016 boxes, a report for all my Windows 2019 boxes, all my Red Hat um, 8.3 boxes. And because all of these operating systems are the same, and I'm running particular you know, applications on those, um, but as far as operating system changes, if I you know, then click on my um, elements view, it gives me a view of the, all the changes. Well, then I'll click on the element at the top of here. And what that does is it lets me see the file names that were changed across the systems that the files were changed on. What that does is if I see a file was changed across all of my Windows 2012 R2 boxes, odds are that was changed um, by a provisioning tool or some other patch was rolled out, but it's a common change. But if I see something that was only changed on one system and it's a snowflake, and you know, say crypt.dll was updated, but it was only on one system. That might be a lot more suspicious. And now I've got something I need to go and dig into a little bit deeper. I may go to my logs to find out, you know, why did that change? When did it happen? Um, what caused that 
that that update to happen to that DLL file. So you start digging into that, but it helps you point out, you know, what was happening on those systems. Um, you know, if you see there were hot fixes on the box, then you have a pretty good idea that there was a patch rolled out. But, you know, generally you're not doing that on just one system. So you might want to look across that sort by element and see what's common and what's not common. So quick summary, um, you want to analyze what is making changes in your environment. I really recommend making sure the event generator is up and running on your systems. Um, for Windows, it's really easy. For Linux, if you're still using the Tripwire Java agents, there's a little bit more management to keep that up and running because like Red Hat, CentOS, and uh, SUSE will unload third-party drivers from the operating system when they do security patches to the kernel. And so you'd have to put that back in before the event generator would run. Um, for Red Hat, I know I've written some command output capture rules for the event generator that would put it back for Java agents. If you're running the Axon agent, it does that automatically for you. It sees that our event generator was unloaded and it will load it back up into the kernel um, stack and start tracking changes again in real time or generating the audit events for you if you're not doing real time. So you definitely wanna know what is making changes. Use that system log report. Go through and run a report on the audit events that are coming into your system and find out what applications are making changes. Knowing what's making changes on your systems um, is a very first step, good first step in you know, getting a handle on whether those things should be making changes or not. Could we have better processes? And if we know that these are all good methods for um, making changes on the endpoints, then set up tripwire actions to auto-promote those things. You know what user it's supposed to be, you know the application name, you know that's how Tripwire detects it and sees it. And if it's a known good process and you've reviewed it, set up a Tripwire action to start auto-promoting those. It, it makes it a lot easier. I've walked through that with a number of my customers and it reduced the number of changes they see on a daily basis tremendously. Um, for patching, yes, we do have DSR, the, the Dynamic Software Reconciliation, which will reach out and pull down manifests, especially for Linux boxes, you know, get the manifest for RPM updates and um, compare the changes we detect to the manifest. And that is another great way to do auto promotion. But especially for applications and things you roll out with a provisioning tool, um, having a tripwire action to auto promote those is, is a great way to reduce the amount of things you need to review. You wanna auto promote those expected changes. I mean, it really is pretty easy once you think about what your processes are or do that log examination to find out what your processes are. Um, sorting can make that manual review a lot easier. Um, and if you're one of those customers that we have, and there still are a bunch that have been using Tripwire for a long time, and they go into the node view and go to each node and do their promotions node by node by node. It's a, it's a long, tiring process. And, and some people, frankly, give up doing it if that's the only way they know how to do it. Set up a tripwire report that pulls in the changes across all of the systems, especially I, I like doing like systems, but you could do it across all systems and do your promotions from the reports. It's so much easier. Um, it, you know, the node view is, is nice. It can give you some good information. And if you're looking up something on a particular node, you know, the, the tripwire uh, node view and element searches are great. Um, but when you're doing the reviews of the changes, you want to, well, 
you do want to do your auto promotions and get rid of as many as possible. But any manual review on the few things that are left, you want to make that easy on yourself. Do it from reports. Um, integrations do speed up review. Um, you know, talk to your Tripwire SE. Get as much automation as possible. Looking at how you introduce change and integrate Tripwire to that so that all those things are auto-promoted. And there is something called Tripwire State Analyzer, which essentially creates lists of what software, what ports and services are in use across your systems. And when something new is installed, it can like flag that and say, hey, there's software that's not on my list of known software for that system. Um, should it be there? But basically, it, it analyzes the state of various um, types of objects on the system. So it has, you know, a list of the groups on a server, the users on a server. You can do what ports are open for which services and should those be allowed. Um, it allows you to create a, a list of known software on all the boxes and known services. So if you know what's supposed to be on your systems, what's allowed to be on those systems, and can um, use Tripwire State Analyzer to generate lists of those, and they're not, you know, and the servers aren't changing dynamically all the time. This is really good for a data center type environment. Um, and a lot of our NERC customers use Tripwire State Analyzer for that purpose. Um, they need to ensure that there's nothing running on those boxes that's not supposed to be. State Analyzer is a fantastic way to do that. So I'm at the end of my presentation period, and um, I'm open for any questions that I may have generated um, during the presentation. And hopefully you got something um, useful out of it. Um, one of the questions I have is along the lines of making changes, authorized or not, um, can Tripwire be used for DAM activity on database servers? And Tripwire can be used for um, uh, DDR changes, another word structure to the database. Um, but generally, you don't use Tripwire to track the uh, records in a database for changes. So in other words, um, if there's like a customer database that is has records changing all the time or you know um, new things are added, subtracted, and updated, you don't want to dynamically track that with a something that does a baseline. But if you have a static table, say with formulas, and you want to know if anybody mucks with one of those formulas in that database table, you can baseline that. It's not changing often, and you can have Tripwire check it on a periodic basis to make sure those formulas haven't changed. We can baseline a database table. We have something called a query rule that allows you to do that. So. Um, the Tripwire database node also will baseline stored procedures, triggers, um, you know, the, the, the columns of your tables and the table names. So having a baseline of those things, knowing when they changed, and you can configure Tripwire to um, track the audit log of the database to look for who made the change when it happened and correlate that to it. So for a lot of database changes, you can potentially get who made the change. Um, those types of things are really handy. Um, I know there's a lot of requirements for knowing who's accessing and looking at database information. Tripwire doesn't do that, but those products often don't show you the before and after of a change to, say, a stored procedure. Tripwire does do that, and that can come in, I mean, really handy. I've had a couple of customers where somebody changed the stored procedure it blew up something in their database, and you know they were using one of those products that um, tracked the changes to the database, but they just saw that the stored procedure changed. They didn't know what it was before the change. 
um, with tripwire in place, they can actually see the before and after on the stored procedures. And a number of them have put that in place, even though they were using um, another database tracking product for the records and the accesses. They use tripwire for the structure of the database and knowing what the before and after was so that they could recover from um, bad changes very quickly. Um, any other questions out there? All right, Liz. Um... Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, oh. Well, thank you, everyone. And, oh, did we have something else come through? Yeah, I think. Oh, he oh, just said. Awesome. I think I answered the uh, the database question well enough. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and if anyone does have any questions, feel free to send those our way. We will be sending out a follow up email today, so you can feel free to respond to that, and we'll be happy to have someone answer your question if if something does come up later today. But thank you, Mike, for a great event, and thank you to our audience for attending. We hope that you found this session informative and useful to you. Um, I know we did have a few people that joined late or had to leave early, so we'll make sure that everyone receives a link to the recording and slides later today. Uh, if you would like proof of attendance, please make sure to respond to that email, and we'll make sure you get a CPE confirmation letter. Um, so thank you again. We hope you'll join us for our next tips and tricks session. They tend to be at the end of every month, so keep an eye on your email for the next session. Um, but thank you all again and have a great day. Thank you.